So last time we did a tier list on my second channel, you guys absolutely loved it. Today, we're going to be doing a doctrine tier list. This is probably going to upset a few people, but here we go, boys. The tier list right in front of me. So what doctrines have we got to work with? So officer course, and at the very bottom, here we have the options. So there's actually way more options than you actually thought. So you thought it was only four options, right, for the doctrines? Wrong. We have mobile warfare. We have superior firepower. We have the grand battle plan, and we have mass assault. Then we have all the break-offs of it. We've got mass mobilization path. We have deep battle plan path. We have the infiltration path. We have the assault path. Integrated support path. Disperse support path. We have blitzkrieg path. We have mobile defense path. We have desperate defense L and L. Blitzkrieg L and R. Desperate defense. Modern blitzkrieg. Air land battle. Shock and awe. Air land battle. Shock and awe. Oh, they have the same names. That's why they've got the L and R and the R and R. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So this is just a mod I'm running that summarizes them and you You'd hover over them it shows you all the bonuses that you get there are a few hidden little easter eggs inside of these doctrines that you're probably not even aware of probably because they've added them very recently first of all everyone goes for integrated support extra 25 percent and then another 25 percent soft attack on top of your support companies is freaking massive particularly if you're stacking artillery of rockets or of guns both of them i i equally support both and it also gives you extra org which is always good because support companies if you don't know support companies deduct organ organization from divisions when you add them on. I bet you didn't know that, did you? So when you add on support now, it will give you organization. Bet you didn't know that, right? That's the reason why I'm against stacking too many support companies. But here we have on this side, disperse support. So this used to be the old meta. And the reason why it was this, can you see that 10% soft attack for line artillery? Can you see that? This is new, plus 5% coordination. So the short version of this is coordination allows you to attack the top division and deal all the firepower to it. So therefore it'll be knocked out quicker so you can have like a, a domino effect where you can knock out all the divisions. From testing by me, some other independent boyos and another major YouTuber, which I've forgotten his name, which makes me feel bad, but regardless, he tested it. Coordination is crap. <laughs> it's crap, it's not very good. So there's no point focusing on it. You can also get it from mobile warfare too, if you have the officer core. So what we need to talk about as well, which is also a bit a little bit frustrating, is that we also have to talk about some of the officer core spirits that are unlocked based on certain doctrine paths. There's only four of them, so we don't have to go into too much depth with it. But here we go. Extra 5% coordination, extra 5% at division speed. For the most part, this one is probably the one of the worst ones, unfortunately. But there you go. Now you know. Now you know. Oh, this is a new one they've added recently too. So under the second doctrine for Grand Battle Plan, I mean, the first one's great in my opinion, plus uh, 10 max entrenchment for all your army. That's the entirety of your army, even tanks, gets an extra entrenchment. So basically, a free engineer for the entirety of your army. And if you have an engineer on top of that, you're basically going to get even more entrenchment. You can dig in so deep that you have dug to the center of the earth. And now we have Grand Battle Plan, which gives extra 10% max planning, which is basically an extra 10% attack, but it's, it basically decays over time. And you also have daily command power plus 0.25. This was added to balance out democracies who don't have a lot of command power because they have very low war support. Command power is gained quicker if you have more war support, hence the reason why democracies would have that as an option. So it gives you more an incentive to have command power. And why is command power useful? Well, it allows you to uh, get your high command earlier. You see these command power requirements? And these are these are fixed, by the way. So whenever this guy is, is assigned, you're permanently losing that command power, so you can't gain it back. You gain up to a maximum of 200. If you assign them all, obviously, you're losing about 60 command power based on their skill level. It varies. Erwin Rommel only uses 10. This guy's 30. You know what? I actually don't know how command power scales, because these numbers don't even make sense. This guy's level 1. He's basic specialist, but this is a genius. He requires 10. This requires 30. Oh, there's also 10% coordination under branch into operation, which is the assault path, which is basically the max planning path for grand battle plan. So it's planning, grand battle plan planning, and more planning. You've also got here maximum command power plus 30 as well. When they added the resistance, there was a lot of these ones that add extra damage to enemy garrisons in occupied states too. So there's this one under mass mobilization. There's also this one down here under werewolf guerrillas under desperate defense for mobile battle plan. So that just talks about some of the more less known stats under the doctrines that you might not be aware of. All the ones that were tweaked and adjusted on releases of new expansion packs. So let's decide where to place the first one. So technically, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's actually 12 in total. Where do we begin? I'm going to go with what I personally think is the weakest path. Now, it's not necessarily the weakest because of what it gives, because I think for the most part, all of these paths are viable in certain circumstances. 
circumstances. I think that's the way they've been designed that way. But this path has been designed specifically where it only gives most of its bonuses to infantry. It only gives specifically most of its bonuses to reinforce rate. And it gears most of the bonuses just basically producing infantry the entire game and really not making anything else. So basically no tank bonuses, no bonuses to any other stats, to be totally honest with you. Mass mobilization. Unfortunately, mass mobilization is the weakest. Here we go, the bonuses here. So you gain a reduction to overall combat width. So you basically can wedge more infantry into, into a division. This is okay. Armored car org. Ugh. Infantry recovering is basically this path 101. Fighting for as long as possible, even though you're against the odds. Extra org for infantry. As I said, infantry focus. Yeah, extra 5% recruitable possible, which is weird in, in my opinion, because most of the nations that go for this and get the most benefit from it are nations that don't need the manpower, which I think is just really strange. Less attrition, which is not ever a problem because you're making basic infantry. Attrition is something that people with big divisions and expensive divisions have to worry about. Out of combat supply penalties. Surprising, this is actually pretty good. Now then we got, here's the main feature of this one. 22% extra reinforce rate. Massive. Basically just says you don't need to research radio. Don't bother researching radio. You don't need to. It'd be nice to have it, but there's no point having it. Radio only gives 5%. This gives 22% for the entire doctrine. Absolutely insane. Plus five entrenchment. Basically a weak engineer. You can deploy infantry quicker. Infantry, infantry, infantry. Extra resistance. Garrisons. Basically, it's defending with infantry. It's just not that great, unfortunately. Mass mobilization path. And it is going to be placed, unfortunately, in the D tier. So next one we've got is the deep battle plan. So deep battle plan is a focus on infantry, mobilization, as well as armor, giving lots of org and organization re recovery rates. It's in a weird way. It's like a defensive version of mass mobilization, but geared towards more high production units, such as mechanized, motorized armors, cars, and tanks. It also gives a few bonuses for tanks and breakthrough and a few other bonuses for org on infantry. It basically does nothing really well, but it does a little bit of everything. The highlights of this one is the org loss when moving. So when you're winning, you can snowball and win. When they're retreating and running away and when they're attacking, they're basically not gaining as org as quick as you. So you're basically snowballing them as they're running away. You've got to, be, you've got to win to begin with though. <laughs> so I don't know. You've got to break them and then you've got to initially overrun them or encircle them. The biggest benefit to me on this path is that 20% supply consumption reduction. 20% is massive. It's basically a logistics wizard and a bit more added on for your entire army. That is actually a really, really big deal. Don't underestimate that one. Remember, that means if you've got a big front line like the Eastern Front Barbarossa, you can have 20% more divisions on the front line where the other side's bleeding manpower and attrition. Deep battle is the war of attrition. It's basically fighting for longer and harder than your opponent, sustaining less attrition to eventually overcome them. Unfortunately, there's just not many good bonuses for all the offensive. And a lot of time, a lot of strategy in Hoi Fort uh, don't revolve around defending. So it's a very strange one. Like whenever you, you, you plan to defend in Hoi Fort, you don't plan to offend. You plan to attack in Hoi Fort. I guess if you're in a scenario you, where you've got an advanced army with lots of military factories and you're on the defensive, Deep Battle Plan it is. Also, one other thing for Deep Battle Plan, I found this useful prior to No Step Back. If you had Deep Battle Plan and you were fighting, let's say, in South America, in the Amazon or Africa a lot, the 20% reduction in supply was very, very useful. But I found that supply reductions now aren't as good. So unfortunately, it makes it feel me with great great sadness i have to put this one really low down because even though i like it and i used to i used to use it quite a lot unfortunately it's just one of the weakest doctrines in the game it really is i think just based on what i said it's it's more focused towards defending than it is attacking and you don't defend in hoi fort you're all about attacking by the way just a bit of a side note there is planning to be a rework of defending in hoi fort where defending might become a little bit more interactive so therefore these doctrines might become significantly better anyway the next one is great battle plan and we have the infiltration path <sighs> Armored car organization, which is the, the most bizarre bonuses in the world. Because think about it. Armored cars on the offensive, when do you actually do that? Listen, if you want to role play, role play, please do. But please don't think the uh, the armored cars are any good on the attack. They really aren't. There are some bonuses here that you probably don't even think are that great, but actually are. Can you see army plus 10% 10, 10 breakthrough and soft attack plus 5%? That's an extra 5% soft attack and 5% breakthrough for the entire army. Everything. Everything. So what infiltration path does? What well, technically grand battle plans don't just full stop. It's kind of a jack of all trades. It just does a little bit of everything. It's on the attack, it's on the defense, but it doesn't really particularly steer towards any one certain thing. So we have a little bit of supply reduction, which is a deep battle thing. We have org, which is kind of a mass mobilization path thing. Then we have a little bit of attack with breakthrough for tanks. I guess it's nice to have the soft attack and breakthrough for the entire army as well. You've got a little bit of recon, you've got a little bit of planning. You've got you've got engineers for your entire army geared towards defending. The Probably the biggest highlight of the grand battle plan path, other 
other than the D plus 10 entrenchment for the entire army. I'll say it again and I'll say it again. I know you guys love engineers, okay? And I, I understand the love for engineers goes quite far. I've, I've seen my comment section, okay? I've heard them, okay? Plus 10 entrenchment basically means an engineer for everyone. I'm really adamant about it. I'd prefer to have a grand battle plan and have engineers. I know that's how much I hate engineers. The highlight of this one, I am, I am going to get back to this point, is the plus 25% extra land attack at night. From testing, this is probably one of the best bonuses in the entire game. 25% extra land attack is massive. It tends to be kind of an attack drop at nighttime. So it tend to be a tank in the day, defense of the night, attack in the day. I know people, when they activate the battle plan, they're constantly always attacking. But to maintain that firepower and that damage at night is a big deal. And if you stack this one, infiltration path, with this one, night vision one and night vision two, you do the same damage in day and night in both occasions. Amazing. Amazing. We have the grand battle plan. You know, this focus is good. It does a lot of really good things. There's some spiciness in there. And I personally think this is one of my first underrated paths. And I'm going to give that one an A tier. Next one's up. We have the assault path. So this one is gauged towards gaining a lot more organization for mobile divisions. So it's almost like the attack version of grand battle plan, which feels really strange to do. The only downside with this path, it gains extra breakthrough for your entire army, which is awesome. You're gaining extra defense and orc for your entire infantry and mechanized. There's a lot of great bonuses on here. The only downside to this is that you gain 30% max planning, which is great. I'll admit it's really, really good, but planning, unfortunately, has to be built up over time, and you can't just kind of, like, use it. For instance, you can't even use it for amphibious invasions. You don't gain planning bonus for amphib, which is really, really, really pants. It's a tough one, this one, because the bonuses are a lot better, and you geared a little bit more towards offense and attack, but once again, there are other doctrines out there that give way bigger bonuses, for instance, for breakthrough for tanks, as well as better soft attack bonuses. So it tries to be a little bit of mobile warfare and a little bit superior firepower, but it kind of does neither. And unfortunately, I am just not a big fan of this one at all. The coordination and the max command power bonuses have not really made it any better for me, and I'm just not a big fan of it. So unfortunately, I put it in a Z B tier. All right, here we go. The spiciness now, guys. We have shock and awe. And with this one, we are gaining loads and loads of soft attack. So we have soft attack support. So remember, this is important. This, we got, we've gone down the integrated path here, the right hand side. And this is giving us juicy soft attack for our frontline battalions. It's giving loads of 50% soft attack for our support artillery. Plus one reconnaissance, infantry, motorized, and mechs, extra soft attack, extra hard attack, loads of organization. It basically is about firepower and it is superior firepower. And it is superior firepower that is very about shock and awe. I will say one thing though, we're moving away from defense now. We've not getting these entrenchment bonuses anymore. The defense bonuses aren't as strong overall. There's lots of breakthrough and recovery rate, lots of focus on mobile divisions. The only thing I will say about this is if you are playing as a nation that isn't a superpower, you might struggle a little bit on the defense with this one. So just be aware of that. So in this case, our shock and awe boyo is probably one of the best for attacking. And I am leaning towards S tier. That might move at some point. I'll be aware that might move at some point. But at the moment, A or S is feeling really, really strong. I mean, to be fair, when it comes down to it, this is the stronger path on the right. And then Shock and Awe is also really strong on the right as well. You see me do this in my videos over and over again. Integrated support, Shock and Awe. It's one of my favorites. It's because it just yields so much soft attack. And at the end of the day, it's about attacking. This is an attacking game. It's about conquering. And these defensive doctrines on the right, they just don't seem to cut it anymore. Anyway, next up, we have Air Land Battle. It basically is Shock and Awe, but it has extra bonuses for air superiority. I've role played this a few times by trying to stack as much air superiority as possible. Maybe you could do Air Land Battle and, and pair it with a maxed out battlefield support with cast spam. And I have a feeling it probably would outperform Shock and Awe because cast is already really strong. Uh, in all fairness, I think it's very, very, very good. But it just, it falls just a little bit short in comparison to Shock and Awe. So I put it as a A tier. I feel like Hoyfar could do with some more doctrines. I would like to see all of the doctrines intertwined. I want to see it like a tree and you can go down different paths within a massive, massive tree. That would be so freaking cool. That's the way it used to work in Hoi, uh, Hoi 2, by the way. Next up, we have Shock and Awe down the Disperse Support Path. This gets strange now because we're like focusing on mobile divisions. We've got focusing on tanks. But with tanks, you don't technically have... You can't have line artillery in them because they're too slow. Oh, no, it does actually include motorized anti-tank. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I'm learning new things. I'm learning new things. So, under the scenario, you're stacking lots of soft attack, which you do that with Shock and Awe anyway. The problem is, is Disperse Support still falls short compared to integrated. So it's like it is shock and awe, which is great and everything, but you're losing out on some soft attack because of the support, which is just so unbelievably OP. I find it really hard to degrade this too 
damage because shock and awe is really good but the truth is dispersed support is not as good as integrated support so unfortunately i have to give it a mighty fine thumbs down anyway next up is air land battle basically you're going for infantry with lots of air support that's the only way i can imagine this i guess you could do the same thing i mentioned before about having line artillery as a part of division as well i suppose that's doable but once again the only thing you compare it to is these two doctrines in the center and then the end of the day you end up with less soft attack with the support and if you have integrated support they end up being more expensive so unfortunately air land battle is a bit of a no 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 for me no 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 all right next up we have modern blitzkrieg so this is the combination of going down the blitzkrieg path which is so breakthrough an org for tanks on the right path and then the combination of more org and more breakthrough down the right path so basically getting stacking as much breakthrough as humanly possible just to understand breakthrough it doesn't do physical damage it's the way of basically ignoring damage like armor when pushing in the front lines. The idea behind modern warfare is to achieve your objectives incredibly quickly and then encircle them or capitulate your opponent. Not for a long drawn out war, which is more support towards Deep Battle. Deep Battle is about a long, grindy conflict, focusing on logistics, holding on to division, holding on to supply, where mobile warfare is about achieving your objective as quickly as possible. It gives you a massive, juicy planning speed bonus of 70%, which is, no offense, isn't even that great at the end of the day tanks reduce organization and this gives you a boost in organization so if you were going to make a tank division that was less focused towards org i guess maybe you would put more mobile divisions in it but then the tanks would have less of an impact i suppose in that case you would probably go for uh, mobile infantry in that circumstance but you cannot deny modern blitzkrieg is the shit it is very 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 strong and there's no doubt about it it has to be an s tier all right next up we have desperate defense left hand side so this is going to be a really strange path this because we're going to be going down the tank path to gain maximum org and breakthrough but then we're not going to capitulate all the way and go for all the breakthrough we decided to take a detour and focus on manpower i don't deny that the manpower is good if you desperately need it guerrilla tactics is a really good tactic i don't actually deny that but at the end of the day it's like you're not really taking advantage of all the bonuses all the way and it makes me even question like why would you even be going down that path what are you even thinking and i'm going to give this like a c tier i understand in some situations this actually might be worthwhile hence the same way i still feel about deep battle because i feel like in some circumstances it actually is worthwhile but then the day why would you ever go down this path i really really don't get it it is one of those emergency paths but aside from that i have no idea why that would be the path you would choose so we've got modern blitzkrieg now with mobile warfare this one i think is an underrated one so this has the maximum potential to have incredibly fast and high organization mobile infantry considerably more than even down this path. It gives you an extra plus 10 org maximum. And it also gives org rate, max speed. It's one of those ones that's just a really strange fit. If you're making your divisions a little bit more mobile infantry focus and less about tanks, and you want to focus even more about speed, you could go for modern Blitzkrieg with mobile warfare path. It is actually viable. It just feels like it fits into like a really strange position where it's like, you don't want to go all the way with tanks, but you want to focus a bit more on mobile infantry as well. And at the minute, mobile infantry kind of slightly underperform. There's nothing wrong with them, but the moment mobile infantry are not the strongest and then finally we have mobile infantry with werewolf tactics uh desperate defense the problem with this path is desperate defense just feels so role play it's just germany at the end of the game isn't it it's strange that none of the others have those kind of like historical flares built within them as well like as a country acting a certain way i unfortunately going to rank this one the lowest of the low i think this is actually a really really piss poor one all right then let me just see if there's anyone that needs to be adjusted in this list i think for the most part the right path of shock and awe is so strong the right path of mobile world thought he's super strong i do think there are a few on here that are pretty op i think for the most part you could survive on superior firepower going down left or right either way and still be totally okay and i do think maybe the path of grand battle plan on the right is a little bit underrated but for the most part i stick to my guns on that one i think that is what it is anyway this is my final list i'll be totally honest with you what i think most people don't understand and what people get really confused with is that this s and a tier they're very packed together i don't think there's one that really pulls ahead of all the others they are slightly better down the right path of shock and awe but i think for the most part there's a lot of them in the a tier that are really really good as well and i don't think you can count any of them out i will say that these bottom ones though are absolute shit though everyone who loved this video also loved this one give it a click